Nell was giving us a music lesson. If you want to know good music, then all you have to do is listen to the Carter family, the Beatles, Bob Dylan, and Nina Simone, she said, turning back to us. She took four albums out of a milk crate. The green record player sat near her bare feet. That's all it takes to have good taste, I swear. <clears throat> she laid the albums out on the grass like big square playing cards. I looked at the Carter family album and noted the women's heavy wool coats, the man's stiff suit, their steely gazes into the camera. Well, they look madder and far, I said. <laughs> People didn't smile for cameras back then, Nell said. They didn't have much to smile about, I guess. But they're the best. They're real. Plus, it took so much longer to take a picture, Josie said. Nell taps the album cover, showing a beautiful black woman in a red dress. Nina, she said, as if this were someone she knew and missed very much. She held the album by the cover and let the record slide out. You have to hear this. She put the needle on the correct groove and sat back with her hands behind her, her eyes closed as the song started. She mouthed the words as the woman sang, Nimikita Pa. in French, so neither Josie nor I could understand a word of it, but somehow I could hear the sadness caught in the notes. I liked it, but I wasn't about to admit this. The music floated out to each corner of the yard, tightening the air. Nell shook her head just a bit with the words, the way someone does when they are particularly satisfied. A smile played on her lips, but she looked as she always did when singing as if she would burst out crying too. Josie was watching Nell with a strange little smirk on her face, as if she thought Nell was incredibly beautiful or psychotic, or maybe both. <laughs> when the song ended, with many repetitions of Nima Kita Pa, the needle caught a couple of specks of dust and crackled out before Nell lifted the arm. She looked as if the song had worn her out. Even though she hadn't shed any tears, her eyes were wet, so she wiped them with the backs of her wrists. What does it mean? I said, quiet, afraid of breaking some kind of grace that had fallen over us. Nell didn't look at me and didn't speak until she had put the record back in its sleeve. She stared down at the album cover. It means, do not leave me, she said. None of us said anything for a time. I don't know why. The song had caused a great silence to collect in the yard, as if all the usual sounds of evening had retreated into the deepest part of the woods. I would never, ever forget this moment. Nell finally slid the album back into the milk crate. I know what Bob Dylan's stuff, Josie said proudly, blowing in the wind and all that. He can't sing worth a dime. <laughs> Well, that's the beauty of his singing, Nell said, and didn't offer to explain further. She held the Dylan album out to Josie. Just take it and listen to it when you get a chance. Especially, you're going to make me lonesome when you go. That one will rip your guts out, I promise. She stacked the other albums up and put the record player atop them, then gathered them all up in her arms and stood, her knees popping. I bet supper's almost ready. And we should have been helping your mother, she said. Wait, Josie said. What about the Beatles? Which is your favorite song by them? Oh, God, Nell said. She walked away, but then stopped after putting one foot on the porch step and looked back at us, clutching all the albums to her chest. Every damn one of them, I reckon. <laughs> Nell, you watch that dirty mouth, said my mother, who was suddenly standing at the screen door. And y'all come on and eat. 
As Mom went back into the house, I saw Daddy standing in the open kitchen door. He had been eavesdropping. His face was solid and straight-edged, the way the sky looks when a storm can blow up out of nowhere. With him, there was always a storm just past the horizon. Thank y'all.